Vocabulary. Nucleotide. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Ribonucleic acid. Have you ever wondered why it is that you look like your parents? Why it is that when a flower, which grows in the field, roots in the field, when it reproduces, it makes more flowers. Roots in the field, stems, just like it. Why is it, you're going to have to pardon my bird drawing ability, but we're going to draw a bird here. Why is it that when birds That, that's a little backwards. When birds lay eggs in their nest, speckled, those eggs, when they form, they don't give rise to fish. Why is it? Well, as long as we're talking about birds, we should be talking about bees as well. And the birds and the bees. Well, when a mommy, here's the mommy with her hair, smiling pretty, loves a daddy. Wait a minute. That's not what this talk is about. That's a talk for a different day, a different subject. But it does have something to do with our topic at hand, and that is a macromolecule which is, which is responsible for making things just like their parents. I'm going to erase that line here. And what types of atoms are in this macromolecule? This macromolecule is known as a nucleic acid. And there's two different basic types of nucleic acids. There's DNA, which is that molecule which makes you like your parents. And there's RNA, which is a molecule which helps DNA to make you like your parents. And there's three, there's actually five basic atoms that make up DNA and RNA. There's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Where have we seen that before? We've seen that with carbohydrates and with lipids. There's nitrogen as well, and there's phosphorus. You can remember the atoms that make up DNA and RNA with the acronym CHOMP. Kind of like CHOMP, you're eating something, but not the M, it's CHOMP, because there's nitrogen and phosphorus as well. These are the types of atoms that make up nucleic acids, and there's two different basic kinds of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. Well, what makes up nucleic acids? Just like other macromolecules, nucleic acids are made up of monomers. What are the monomers of nucleic acids? Well, the monomers of nucleic acids are actually big mo molecules that are made up of other parts. And I'm pulling the other parts on the screen for you to see. And now we're going to bond them together with my white pen here. Monomers of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. Nucleotides have three basic parts. The first part is the, nitro the nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous base. And that base, it's called a base because it has acid-base-like properties. It's the business end of the nucleotide. It's what does the major work. For the, for the nucleotide, for DNA and RNA. It's called nitrogenous because it has nitrogen in it. It's a lot of these corners, instead of being carbon, which we've seen in other videos, some of these corners are nitrogen. And I'm just drawing random nitrogen. I'm not trying to represent a, a technical definition or technical actual uh, nucleotide. I'm just showing you that there's nitrogen in those molecules. The second part is a 5-carbon this is all carbon here, one, two, three, four, five, a five carbon sugar, of which there are two types. One of them is D, 
oxyribose. And that's different from ribose. There's two different kinds of sugar. One of them is deoxyribose. That that's the sugar that's used in DNA. And then there's ribose sugar, which is the sugar that's used in RNA. The third part of a nucleotide is very important. It is the phosphate group. The phosphate group is used in the bonding of nucleotides together, and it's very important. But we've got the nitrogenous base, a part of nucleotide. We've got the five carbon sugar. It could be deoxyribose or ribose. Deoxyribose makes up deoxyribonucleic acid, and uh, ribose makes up ribonucleic acid. I'm going to draw, I'm going to write that out on our next slide. And then we've got phosphate group, which is that third part of the nucleotide. There are a bunch, there are actually four main types of nucleotides found in DNA, which I'm going to uh, show you right here. The reason I'm going to show you the ones for DNA is because that's the ones we typically learn in biology before we learn about the ones in RNA. There's a different one in RNA that's used by RNA that we're not going to talk about in this video. That's not to say it's not there, it's just to say we're not focusing on it. These are the nucleotides found in DNA. Some of these are found in RNA. And we're going to split here. They join together with hydrogen bonding. There's those lines represent hydrogen bonding between these molecules. And what you see here is this is the adenine, which is represented with an A, and the thymine, which is represented with a T, and they tend to bond together with hydrogen bonding. This whole side is the nitrogen base. This whole side is the nitrogen base. You don't see pictured here the sugar and the phosphate. They're not in this picture. That's what the squiggly line is representing. There's other things this nitrogen connects to, and that other thing is those five carbon sugars, and that's a terrible pentagon. That's terrible. Terrible. There it is. The five carbon sugar and the phosphate group. That's adenine and thymine, two of the different DNA nucleotides. There's also others, which I'm going to show you right now. Apart from adenine and thymine, if I can pull this down, there's one other, two others rather. There are guanine, which is represented with a G, and cytosine, which is represented with a C. And they like to bond together with hydrogen bonding as well. All of this is the guanine nucleotide, and all of this is the cytosine nucleotide. And those are the business ends because they are what do the bonding between different nucleotides. But how do you put nucleotides together? Well, nucleotides are put together to make polymers. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's imagine we're making a molecule of RNA. A molecule of RNA, I'm going to go right over my word polymer here, would have, let me move this momentarily, out of the way, would have a single strand and different nucleotides. And what happens is the sugar and the phosphate bond to other sugar phosphates. This sugar phosphate bond, this phosphate bonds to this sugar, this phosphate bonds to this sugar. And what you see happening is it's starting to make a rigid structure, what we call a backbone. And then the nucleotides hang out in the middle. Well, there's no middle RNA because it's just a single strand. That is what RNA looks like. It's got a backbone of sugar and phosphate and nucleotides. That's different from DNA because DNA is not single-stranded. DNA actually has double strands. I'm going to bring this back here. We're going to make it so we can get lots of them very quickly. And what you see happening is there's bonding between the backbones, the sugars and the phosphates. And then there's hydrogen bonding, which is that special kind of bonding 
that things like water do between nucleotides. And certain nucleotides bond together. And what you should be seeing on the right-hand side of your screen is a molecule of DNA, which is a uh, double helix. It's called a double helix because it looks like a ladder that's twisted together. And this is the basic structure. It looks like a ladder that's twisted together that rotates around itself. DNA doesn't actually spin inside your cells. But that's just showing you the two different sides or the, the full view of what a DNA molecule looks like on all sides. At a basic level, it's just a bunch of nucleotides strung together. And there's two different kinds of uh, nucleic acids. Again, there's deoxyribose uh, sugar. But we're going to take out that os, and we're going to have deoxyribonucleic acid. It's all one word. I'm just not going to write it out because I don't want to write over on the right-hand side where you should be seeing that DNA molecule. And then there's ribonucleic acid. This is what DNA is, abbreviated DNA. It's a lot easier to write. And this is RNA. So what does this nucleic acid actually do? What's the function of this class of macromolecules? Very important. It's what makes you who you are. The reason you have the certain the, the skin color that you have, the reason you have the complexion you do, your height, your weight, all of these things are largely influenced by nucleic acids because nucleic acids store and share, technically the word is transmit, we say in science, transmit genetic information. And the genes are what determine who you are. That's why that genetic information is why this is important. They store and transmit genetic information. And what you're going to learn about when you learn, when you study DNA is exactly how that works. That's the only main function of DNA and RNA. Um, there's other functions for RNA which you can get into when you start looking at nucleic acids more specifically. But that's the basic function of nucleic acids, to store and transmit genetic information. So let's review. The types of atoms that are found in nucleic acids, right here, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus. If we were to zoom in on the double helix, that's the shape of a DNA molecule, we'd find T, that thymine uh, nucleotide, and adenine, that adenine nucleotide. Those are bonding together because A's and T's like to bond together. And then the C, the cytosine, bonds with the guanine. If we zoom in a different section, there's different types of nucleotides in DNA, and there's a one fifth one, a different one in RNA. And the monomers, nucleotides, are put together to make up nucleic acids like DNA or RNA. Keep writing the A and the N together. DNA and RNA. What's the function? One main function. Function to store and transmit genetic information. This is Aaron Willems. Thank you for watching, and do your best to make a positive difference in somebody's life today.